Hey guys, I wanted to just take a minute to describe for you where this data came from and also to answer a, uh, a question that came up this afternoon with one of the students. So first of all, um, let's see if I can find, here we go. <clears throat> this is the tracker software I use to uh, get the data. And basically I imported a video of <clears throat> a bunch of these muffin cups falling through the air with different numbers of uh, paper clips. You can see paper clips are hanging from the muffin cups, and each paper clip clip uh, has a mass of 0.48 grams, and the cup has a mass of 0.9 grams. So, and we're looking at six paper clips on this particular muffin cup that I collected data for. So that's going to be something like, uh, let's see, is that right? Six clips would be six grams, and then. Uh, no, I'm saying that wrong, 3 grams, and the uh, cup has a mass of, of 9, so that works out to be about um, 3.9. It's a little less than that. I think I had 3.7 in the, in the calculation. So you can see that that's the mass of the cup plus the, <clears throat> what you call, paper clips hanging from it. If I just play this video, you'll see what happens is the cups fall. But what I wanted to point out is that what I did was to go through and click on the club cup in each frame, and the tracker software recorded the time, the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate in centimeters of the cup for each frame. So if I go through the frames here, you can see the thing falls, and you can even see that it reaches a basically a constant slope line here in the y versus t graph. Uh, constant slope in a y versus t graph, of course, means constant velocity. So this thing hits a constant velocity, and I exported this set of data. In fact, you can see 2.688, 4.301. If you go back to the uh, data in the spreadsheet, here we have 2.688, 4.301, and so on. So this data comes directly from uh, this video, and uh, that's all there is to that. Then the other thing to point out is this is y versus time. And when I imported it, I converted it to y and time. So you can see, and I converted the centimeters to meters. So the t list and the y list are y's and corresponding times. Of course, and if you plot that, you can see the plot of y versus time here. I guess I should come in. Um, we could, let's go ahead and execute this. And I should add um, y label is y in meters, and x label is t in seconds. And then you can see that adds the labels y in meters, t in seconds. And I suppose just to be, <clears throat> I should say, position of falling muffin tin something like that, and then you can see that prettys up our graph a little bit, position of falling muffin tin, and I've got the height versus time. So the y list and the t list are heights and times, but of course what we want is to model velocity versus time, so I wanted to point out that this piece of code here, <clears throat> basically, uh, and I can go ahead and bump this up a little bit so it's easier to see, this piece of code here uh, takes the y list and the t list and it cr calculates the change in y and the change in time and computes the velocity as the ratio dy dt and then calculates the uh, and it calculates the average of two neighboring times that were measured and from the average time it computes the uh, velocity versus time graph of the thing falling and you'll notice there's a lot of noise so a fella came into my office today asking about all this noise and I pointed out to him, which I, I will point out to you now, that this data actually looks pretty good, but there is a small amount of uncertainty in these values of y, and when you take the difference between two neighboring values of y, you're calculating a small difference, and so even small uncertainties in the y values produce large uncertainties in the velocity. So this noise in the velocity comes from the fact that we're calculating the velocity from experimental data, and that experimental data has errors, and when you take derivatives of noisy data, you get even noisier derivatives because uh, we're taking differences of numbers that are uh, have small errors. So anyway, 
Taking derivatives tends to amplify errors, so you should be aware of that. And the other question he had was about this loop. I never use I here, so he asked me what the heck is I about? Well, first of all, um, I should point out that uh, the length of, let's see, the length, what is it? It's the length of t list. The length of t list is 30. So when I say range, whoopsie, range length t list, what I get is a list uh, 0 to 29. And so if I say 4i in range length t list, and then I say print dot, something like that. Whoops, I guess I want dot comma maybe. Yeah, what I get is 30 dots. So, and you put a comma at the end of a print, it doesn't put in the carriage return, it doesn't put in the new line. So they print all across, which is good because I didn't want to waste the real estate on the screen. Um, the point is, all this does is iterate a number of times equal to the size of the list. And that's the only reason I use this construction. I could just as easily have had a counter. Um, I could have done this. I could have said uh, count equals zero. And I could have said while count is less than the length of t list. And then I could say count plus equals one. That increments the count each time through. This does exactly, whoopsie. Uh, what did I do here? TV list. Oh, I must not have executed this. And now I should be able to do this one. There we go. So uh, this does exactly the same thing as the other code did. I just hadn't executed all the way down, I suppose. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is this function deriv is the same as our function f. So I could have just called it f. It would have been the same thing. Um, this is the function that produces the derivative of v with respect to t. And so I, for some reason I called it derives. Uh, we'll get to the reason I called it that when we, a little bit later in the semester because it's a, it's a habit. It's not random completely. But uh, anyway, that's the idea. So f is just the recipe that calculates the derivative of v with respect to t. And I use that derivative to compute the change in v according to the Euler formula. So that's all there is to that.